We're back again with kind of an update of our DIO doing it ourselves. It's been what a long time last year, maybe, maybe quite a while since we worked on the ceiling for the kids' bedroom. And uh, basically, every summer, there's a week or two period where it's so hot outside, the humidity levels may be so high, air from our AC vents are coming up, and there are there's obviously something coming from our attic hot air going down into here so we get a little bit of wetness on the walls or the ceiling there's some mildew or a little bit of mold and it's usually cleared out within two weeks but to this this season it's gotten we've had so many heat advisories hot days that it's not that simple it's not that short and we really need to try to fix this issue because all the six hundred dollars or so we put in this you know we put like 14 inches of insulation on the top we put a vapor barrier on there and we put this wood ceiling up there because we got this for a discount you know versus going and buying sheetrock so we can cover the air vent for a day when we see some moisture or whatever then put the dehumidifier in here and it's dry and fine we could you know clean all the mildew or whatever up in a day but it's 92 to 90 you know six degrees outside and the kids do, aren't going to want to stay in the bedroom and sleep or whatever when it's that hot in here i worked on a video for probably you know three or four days we probably had 20 to 30 minutes worth of video where we just bumbled around and just didn't know what the ultimate solution was going to be and we still don't until we try and see what so works. we could rip this entire ceiling out and just put sheetrock back in keep the vapor barrier as good as condition as possible and try to get the sheetrock to butt up against here or you know however we can get it to try to create as a minimum of air leak as possible then silicone it put molding there silicone the molding you know on all edges and hope that works and i've thought about dropping the ceiling put a two by three all around the perimeter seal it up then maybe put in a foam foam insulation you know between the two by three and another set of sheetrock um that is definitely a lot of work and it, you know I have been told that that could be a lot of weight on the, the rafter joists. These are pretty lightweight wood, you know, siding or whatever. And I, if I go with the, the smallest, the thinnest sheetrock, it's probably not gonna add much weight on it. I just don't know exactly how we're gonna deal with this. Are we just gonna put sheetrock against this and then molding and silicone as much as possible and hope that none of that condensation hits the sheetrock or this area here well, the issues we would have to overcome is that there are no rafter joists that go right there for like sheetrock or anything to attach to we probably should have made a faux rafter joist on both sides of the wall and the other thing is the interior wall the sheetrock was built to go to the next room before this wall was even put up. So it doesn't go here normally, just stopping at the wall. It actually went over it and the wall was built and pushed up against the it. The exterior wall that's outside, it's the opposite. This thing actually butted up against the wall here, you know, originally. And so <laughs> there's no rafter joist here but and and the thing is it's like 20 22 inches away from the rafter joist there's the screw there is like nothing there and our trim that went against it would be the only thing that held it but you know you would think that would be a problem but when this place was built the vapor barrier was wrapped from the ceiling all the way down the wall to to you know where the siding would be and the siding would end so there was a seal there but when the ceiling got damaged you know before we could fix and re-roof the place 
you know, we had to break through that vapor barrier and there was no way to just patch it up to the old one without probably like taking the wall down and trying to figure <laughs> figure that out. That would have been way too big of a Due job. Due to that, you know, the ceiling kind of comes up slightly. So uh, I don't know how we would fix that. I think, I think if we did sheetrock just attached to the other, to the uh, existing ceiling without making a, uh, a big drop like a three inch four inch drop we would just attach to the stud here attach to nothing at the wall and then put the molding and everywhere there's a seam just silicone it you know before the molding and after the mold when i talk about there being issues like the closet and the entry door there's no room there to drop it with a two by three to drop the whole ceiling without maybe making a big box around both the entryways. With, with this big giant gap, I originally bought some two by threes to try to fill that gap, but there may even be a gap, you know, with it going long ways down where it would hold the most weight. But I think I want to put a board, probably a scrap piece of what I've already got here, down here, you know, try to shove it back here since there's nothing stopping me really from doing that and trying to glue it, you know, to it, get a little bit of glue to hold itself up or just screw some tiny screws in or both and uh, have it just kind of lay there to cover some of the holes up and then maybe just tack some sheetrock up there is where we didn't hit the stud properly when we put it up so we probably don't even have to do that sheetrock you know once we put the sheetrock here and glue it to the stud i mean not glue it screw it to the stud it'll pull it up but i think just in case we don't want to crack our sheetrock maybe we'll tack it up just enough so that it's holding tight enough there. spot where it kind of warped out we may have to undo this piece here let it relax a little bit screw it down tight once we get you know the some relief on it and then yeah just screw it back and then put the sheet rock so we'll there. clean up all the any mildew mold or whatever that's occurring first cover the vent dehumidify and dry completely out before we start doing a lot of this work so it's it's you know 100 percent sanitized and safe you have a little area over there that's kind of drooping down i don't know what we're going to do about that because we like i said we do not want to break our sheet i think rock. i knew what we're going to have to do we'll just lay the because considering there's no stud there lay the sheet rock there take a level put the molding up against it push it up there with the molding tack it down where it's level or flat and then it's have the liter literally destroyed their walls destroyed their rooms this should be markers that wash off but it's sheetrock. I don't know how much scrubbing we can do here, but with that said, this is going to be a complete renovation. You know, sheetrock ceiling, new ceilings, new paint on the ceiling, painting the walls, new flooring, everything. So this is going to be a complete and total renovation that should make the room look like new. When we really done. thought that we were going to bust out the wall and create, you know, one room out of two, but right now that's not in the budget and we definitely if we cannot get this fixed easily this air condensation issue fixed we don't want to spread it to other rooms i think it's gonna fix okay we'll see and it, you know we'll see if it gets better or nothing changes if it gets better but not 100 percent, we might just have to keep sealing and resealing until we get get it close to perfect and they say that sheetrock plus like latex paint on that sheetrock creates another kind of vapor barrier it's breathable you know and, and i guess like humidity or whatever can pass through but it, it does act like a, ba a barrier Some of the issue even though we have like 14 inches of insulation up there is is, is the bats or the rolls or whatever and when you have rafters you're going through there could be some air pockets there so when they when they build these they only put like a three and a half inch piece of a uh, rolled in insulation there and vapor barrier and all and then they blow in the cellulose or whatever on top of that you know 12 inches or 10 inches or whatever and that helps some of the air from 
you know, it gives it a buffer, I guess. It doesn't completely seal it. Yeah. it. It works as like an air buffer, you know. It slows the progress of cold air, you know, here from hitting the hot air in the attic or, you know, in the winter, the opposite. And, um, uh, you know, I hope that we don't have to do that. That would be the last ditch thing, maybe. But, like I said, we're $600 in trying to fix it. We'll probably be several hundred dollars in trying to fix it again. And let's hope and pray that that fixes this issue and makes it not a health hazard or anything. Anyway, I think we're going to end this here. We usually, like I said, we usually do not have these long periods of hot, hot days like we've had this year. So, we could cover the vents, you know, and put the... Uh, you know, do a light cleanup if we have to. Some vinegar, vinegar water mix that just changes the pH and just kills all any little spots like that there. And um, it's not a long-term issue, but this year it really has been bad. So we have to fix it. We have to nip this problem in the bud. All right, take care. And hopefully on our next video, we're going to be actually fixing this problem. Remember, we spent so many, we had so much time working on this, working and working and working and money and time. Oh, yeah. All right, take care.